So it comes just a day after Trump has uh, lowered that bond he needed. He has nine days to pay the reduced $175 million bond. The New York appellate court decided to reduce the original judgment, which was around $464 million, which then prevented AG Letitia James from going in and seizing any of Trump's properties. Uh, and Trump made a lot of comments about this afterwards. He spoke outside the court where he was also getting a court date set for DA Alvin Bragg. So let's talk about all the fallout today. Let's bring in our power political panel. We have Hogan Gidley, the former national press secretary for the Trump campaign, former principal deputy press secretary at the White House joining us. And alongside him, pleased to have Senator Rick Santorum. He is also the senior advisor for the Convention of States. Welcome in, gentlemen. Thank you. So. Thank you. He he won in in a way. He got he got the money. He lowered the bond. Letitia James, though, she made a statement after all this, basically telling uh, Newsline, providing this, saying that Donald Trump is still facing accountability for his staggering fraud. The court has already found that he engaged in years of fraud to falsely inflate his net worth. But at the end of the day, um, she did not get to seize any properties, and it looks like this Truth Social thing is really taking off, Senator Santorum. Well, good for him. Uh, Donald Trump is, uh, is has has a long legacy of successful, uh, you know, ventures, and there's he's no more successful when it's when it's about marketing the Trump brand, and that's exactly what what he's doing here, and uh, that that obviously will help him help his net worth and help him be able to pay all these fees that uh, that he's that he's dealing with. Uh, but the real story here is just uh, the the fact that in a New York court. Uh, they they were able to reduce that that bond because it was just outrageous. In fact, the entire lawsuit is outrageous. But to get a New York court uh, to go along with that, to me, was just just tells you how how we'll help uh, egregious. Uh, yeah, yeah, it will help his appeal, but just how egregious this whole case is. Yes, it is, and I think too the uh, Eighth Amendment, which I believe you're referencing, that it was is a violation potentially there with a with a bond that large. Um, right. He did make a lot of comments. He also kind of struck to the heart of something, Hogan, that a lot of people have been looking at as we see this progress. There was a court date set uh, for Judge Juan Mershon and the uh, Stormy Daniels payments case. Uh, Trump, Trump put out something on Truth Social today, and he talked about how that Juan Mershon's daughters connected to liberals, uh, talking about her working at a Democratic firm, uh, and the connections there to a lot of folks. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, this is is really has the appearance of a an, an election interference because the case wasn't brought by the former the DA and it's being brought now. Uh, Hogan, your reaction to this court date and Juan Mershon? Yeah, I mean, so much of this, as you begin to peel back each layer, kind of exposes the radical left's attempt to try not just to interfere in this election, not just so muddy the waters that independents won't vote for Donald Trump in, in November, but they're trying to bleed him dry financially as well. Uh, they've been working on this now for years. This Stormy Daniels case is something that's nearly a decade old. Forget the fact it's past the statute of limitations, so many problems with it. Uh, cases like this have been litigated before. John Edwards, famously a Democrat, there were no crimes there. The problem, though, exists for Donald Trump, and that it, are the venues of these cases. When you're talking about New York, you're talking about uh, Fulton County and Georgia, uh, Washington, D.C., they're kind of tailor-made to pull from a jury pool that already is predisposed to dislike him. Ninety-some-odd percent of the people in D.C. voted against Donald Trump and voted for Biden, for example. So this is clearly a situation where the left thinks it can work against Donald Trump because they know he's beating Joe Biden in all the polls. So how do they weaponize the government against him? It's just to flood the zone with all types of nonsense. So and every time you start to peel this back, these cases tend to erode. Yeah. They're not real. They're uh, not based on fact. And the American I people are going to see that sooner or later.